So if you just give me a minute to do that. And I'm just gonna check everybody is muted. Okay, so welcome. If you see me looking at the screen manically, it's because I'm still letting people in. So this session today is going to be about overcoming fear, which is an important part of how we monitor and deal with our nervous system. And it's something that I think yoga is really well placed to help us with if we apply some of the tools um, that we learn from yoga. So what I want to do today is to give you three or four tools that you can practice here in our session, and then you can take out into your days and week ahead and try applying as well. Um, and hopefully this is going to help a great deal. So the first thing I want to say about fear is it's obvious that there is a lot being pushed to all of us from all sides, particularly in the media. And I think you would all agree that it's really important that we look after our mental health and we guard our mental health as something that is precious. So in yoga, we talk about the withdrawal of senses. This is actually one of the niyamas in the yoga sutra, one of the, eight, the yamas, niyamas or the eightfold path in the yoga sutra is that we begin to withdraw our senses. So when we apply this to overcoming fear, the first thing is to be really aware of what we're exposing ourselves to. So this might sound obvious. Um, and by the way, before we proceed, I should say you don't need to look at the screen. I'm aware that can be tiring. So if you just want to lie down comfortably and close your eyes, then do so. That's absolutely fine. So I know that I might be uh, stating the obvious, but be very careful what sources of news you expose yourself to. And that includes on social media. It includes the conversations you might have with friends and family. And it includes, it includes even what you're watching on television. So personally, I don't watch anything now that's violent or that might trigger my nervous system. So I just try to have things around me which are quite calming and pacifying. So I try to stay away from anything that's too stimulating. So it's really this awareness. What can I do to safeguard my calmness how can I cultivate more peace what am I inputting into my system because everything we input has to be digested so you know that that's kind of as I say I might be stating the obvious but that's kind of the, the very first thing and then the second thing is about having an understanding of our nervous system so without kind of focusing on our symptoms in an unhealthy way we want to know when we're stressed and when we're not and when we can get out of, and how we can get out of the stress response. So science says that there are three kinds of responses uh, to the stress response. So the first response is when we feel quite calm and in the flow, it's known as social connection, and we're not feeling anxious. And this is what we are aiming in a yoga class to take you towards, this, this feeling of being more connected, more in your body, more at peace and calm so that towards the end of a yoga session, you should feel more peaceful. The second uh, state is one that you are probably familiar with, which is the fight and flight, which is when we are aroused and our body feels it's not safe, our system feels under threat. Now, that's not a problem if we then relax afterwards and we come out of it. The problem is if we become chronically stressed, which is the state many of us are in. So that's particularly what I want to focus on, giving you tools to come out of that chronic dysregulation pattern. And then the third state that we might find ourselves in is when we're completely disengaged, when we're not in our body, we're shut down, we, we are kind of, we might feel very tired and spacey. But again, that's a problem because we're not embodied and we're not here in the present moment. So what we want to be able to do is to engage in our bodies, engage in the present moment and not feel triggered or dysregulated or activated. We want to try to feel calm. So to do this, there's two very important tools. And the first one is the breath. So 
those of us in yoga have been talking about this for well for thousands of years actually but society is just beginning to catch on and talk about the breath but how we breathe is incredibly important and it is the one of the keys for taking us out of a chronic activated stress response so we're just going to practice this now before i then come on to a couple of other tools that are going to help us so the real key with coming out of fear is to make the out breath slightly longer than the in breath and the science behind this is because when we make the exhalation longer than the inhalation it engages the parasympathetic part of the nervous system so that's our rest and digest and heal branch of the nervous system. If we're breathing too fast, maybe from the mouth, from the upper chest, then that's going to keep us in the stress response. If we can breathe through the nose, if we can breathe what's called slower and low using the diaphragm, and we work towards this because it might not be something we can do immediately. But if we can breathe through the nose slower and low, low down meaning down here using the diaphragm, then that's going to help us to come out of the stress response. So this is something, if you come to my sessions, you do quite frequently with me, but in this case, we're going to just focus on the out breath. So if you lie comfortably or you can sit, take one hand to place it on the heart and place the other on the belly. And just take a moment or two to come into your body. And take a moment or two to observe how you are, how you find yourself. And do your best not to resist anything because what we often do when we come into our bodies, we think, oh, this is not a very nice place to be. It hurts or it's tired. And then that keeps us breathing fast. It keeps us dysregulated. So this kind of biohack we're using is to come into the body and to slow the breath down. So close your eyes if that's comfortable for you. If you don't want to close your eyes, that's fine. And just start by watching how you're breathing. And don't make any judgment. Breathe in a state of curiosity if you can. Exploration. How is my breath? Am I breathing mainly from the upper chest, through the mouth, or through the nose? And just observe this. So don't change anything, just observe how you are breathing. Because this awareness is this very first tool that we are engaging. And you might like to ask yourself, how is my nervous system? Do I feel stressed? Do I feel disengaged? Or do, do I feel calm and present? So which of those three states applies? And again, make this observation without any judgment. And then if it's comfortable for you, just see if you can begin to slow the breath down a little without forcing anything. And then think of the breath being slow and low. So you want the movement to be under the hand that's on the belly rather than the hand that's on the chest. Now this is something you can practice when you're not in your yoga class as well. It can be helpful to practice in front of a mirror. So you're just checking that you've not got your shoulders and your upper chest moving too much. This is all upper body is quite calm. And the breath is happening little bit lower in the body and if you can breathe through the nose if you can't do that that's fine if you can't do anything that I'm suggesting that's fine too this is something to work towards and now we're going to focus on the exhalation so the in breath is free just see if you can have a nice smooth out breath
And I'm now going to give you a breathing ratio to work with. If you can't do this, that's fine also. But if you can, I'd like you to breathe in slowly for a count of two into this lower hand. And then breathe out for a count of four. So you're aiming to have your exhalation longer, twice as long as your in-breath. If you can't do this, it's fine. Don't be angry or critical of yourself. Just observe it. It's something we can work towards slowly, slowly over time. Just taking baby steps here. So you're aiming for a longer, smooth exhalation. And if you can, you're making the exhalation twice as long as the in-breath. If you can't, that's absolutely fine. Be kind to yourself. Just breathing with kind attention. And you might like to change the ratio. You might like to make that breathing in for three and out for six. And if that's too much, it might be just that you can breathe in for one and out for two. You just work out what feels okay for you. There's no set way of doing anything. And then when you're ready, drop your hands to your knees, if you're sitting or beside you, if you're lying, and just take a moment or two to observe if that's had any effect on your system. So tune in to how the breath is, how the body is, the mind, particularly the mind and the emotions. If you want to and it's comfortable, you can continue to breathe with this breathing rhythm. Otherwise, just return to normal breathing. And as I say, this is kind of like a biohack for just helping to dial down the activation, making the out breath longer than the in breath. Just observe if that's calmed you down slightly. If it hasn't, that's fine too. So we will come back to that, but that's the first coming out of fear kind of biohack yoga tool that I wanted to share with you. And then the second one, I'm just going to talk through. So just listen. Again, you don't need to look at the screen. The second one is something which is called social connection or co-regulation. So this is being talked a lot about in science, particularly in something called polyvagal theory. And it's all about our sense of safety. And it's about, can I bring a sense of safety to myself? So when we're in fear, we feel unsafe. So the question is, how can we make ourselves feel safe again? And the easiest way we can do this is to connect with somebody that we trust. And this is really important. Um, it's so important that I've learned over the last two years that if I'm feeling fearful, I will pick up the phone and speak to a friend, or I will go out and sit in a coffee bar in order that I can meet somebody. Now, I'm really aware that if you're looking at this and you've got ME, chronic fatigue, you've got long COVID, it's not always easy to be with other people because we're too tired. But just be aware that if you are feeling fearful, to have somebody you can trust, a friend, a teacher, uh, you know, somebody that you can connect with, it will help you. But the great thing also, the science is showing that if we have a pet, like a dog or a cat, that also helps with this social connection. And those of you, I know that there are a lot of animal lovers here. So you will know that just stroking or talking to your dog or cat actually does make you feel a great deal better. So again, I'm probably stating the obvious here, but I'm just saying that science is saying it's really important that we have this social connection with a safe, trusted other. And interestingly, 
um, I watched an interview with uh, Dr. Stephen Porges, who developed polyvagal theory. And the interviewer was asking, well, does this also work on Zoom? And he said, to an extent, it does. Because when we want to feel safe, we need to be with somebody where we can make eye contact, where we feel they're authentic, where they are making friendly gestures to us. So even being at your live yoga class here, it's not quite the same as being in the room together, but even being here as a community, there's 40 of us here, um, as we're recording, can really help us to feel that we are not alone. We're sharing this same human experience and we do have that sense of connection. And in yoga, we talk about this or yoga therapy, we talk about the importance of our heart connection. So coming from the heart, a sense of allowing ourselves to be vulnerable in order that we can be authentic. And that's how we make a much deeper connection with the other. So um, I hope that that's helpful. So that's the second point. And then the third point about coming out of fear, something I've been covering quite a lot recently in the sessions, is this sense of being grounded and being in our bodies, providing, of course, that our bodies feel safe. But the idea in yoga is that I hope I'm trying to help you to feel safer in your bodies. Um, and I know a lot of us here may have had trauma, but slowly, slowly, we can begin to connect with our bodies again. But it's not just about our bodies, it's this connection we have, say, with the floor behind one, well, touching the floor here, the sense of being part of the earth and being rooted here. So with that in mind, we're going to just do a little bit of movement. But first of all, I'd like you, if you are sitting, if you all like to come down to lying now. And if you want to remain seated, that's also fine. So just take a moment or two to touch the floor. And just have a sense that you are connected to the floor. To, and under the floor, even if you're up high in your building, there is the earth. So just have a sense of connecting to the earth. And you might just like to look around your space, look at the ceiling looking at the walls, looking at the furniture, just feeling that you are here now. And then if you like, you can close your eyes, you can leave them open if that feels safer. And just observe where you are touching your support, be that a bed, a sofa, chair, floor. And notice where that space is. And just feel that you are held by the places you are connecting with. And we're now going to go to the next point of safety, which is going to help. So I'm going to guide you to think of a safe resource. So I'd like you to think of something that makes you feel safe. Now, it might be something tangible. So it might be, um, I've got a stone here. It might be that you've got a stone or a crystal that you like to hold. It might be a picture that you like to look at. It might be just a sense of touching the floor. Or it might be an idea of something. So it might be an idea of a relation or a friend or a pet. It's always a very popular one. And I'd just like you to think about this picture of your safe resource. Or as I say, it might be something tangible that you're actually holding, like a stone or a crystal or a picture. 
or it might be something like a tree or a mountain. So I'd like you I'd like to invite you now to just focus on something that makes you feel safe, or it might be something you're touching that makes you feel safe. And throughout our practice, any time you feel a bit out of your body or you, you don't feel quite safe, bring yourself back to this safe resource. And also, in the week ahead, you can use this safe resource to come back to. So any time you're feeling fearful, any time everything's overwhelming and too much, just come back to the present moment, come back to your safe resource. The other thing that's always safe and which I use for myself is coming back to the present moment because when we are fearful it's usually because our mind has jumped ahead into the future and we're imagining something which has not yet happened and it probably won't happen and we don't know if it will happen but when we come back into our bodies into the present moment we usually find this will give us a sense of safety and security and remember it's safety that we want to be aiming for. So just focus on this idea of your safe resource. And then bring your awareness back into your body and just take your awareness around your back now, observing your back and your hips. Seeing where you are touching where there are spaces. And then again, we're going to come back to the breath. Now, for some of you, focusing on the breath might make you feel anxious. If it does, come back to your safe resource. Otherwise, again, just focus on your exhalation. So think about breathing slow and low through the nose. If you can, if you can't, that's fine. Just focus on a long, smooth exhalation. And then we're going to do some very gentle movement before we do our deeper relaxation. But this movement's all about safety, grounding. So remember your safe resource at any time you need to. So I'd like you just to bend the knees and have the feet hip width apart. And take your arms out beside you like a cross. And you can turn the palms down or have them up. Bring your awareness into the soles of the feet and the tailbone and just observe connection they're making with your support. And then we're going to do some very gentle twisting movements with the breath. But again, we're thinking about the out breath being longer than the in breath. And we're going to try to breathe for a ratio where the out breath is twice as long as the in breath. If this doesn't work for you, just breathe in any way that's comfortable. We're going to breathe in for a count of two. And then as you exhale for a count of four, slowly take the knees to the left. Roll the head to look over the right shoulder. Inhale for a count of two, center the head and the knees. Exhale for a slow count of four, taking the knees to the right, rolling the head to look over the left shoulder. Inhale for a count of two, center the head, center the knees. Exhale, slow count of four, 
Knees to the left, head to the right, shoulders, keeping contact with your support. Inhale for two to the center. Exhale for four to the other side. And just do a few more movements like that, slowly, slowly, in time with your own breathing rhythm. And then next time you come with the knees to the right, I'd like you to roll onto your right side. And you're going to take the arms out in front of you, palms together. If you're not sure, look up at me. So you're lying on your right side, the arms are out shoulder level in front of you. Just rest on that right side. And then what we're going to do is some rocking movement because also rocking is very good for soothing the nervous system. Um, it's something else, of course, we know that mothers do this to babies. It's because it helps to dial down activation. So just cradle the right side of the head in the right hand. Take the left hand in front of the belly. And then pushing on that hand, just rock yourself slowly or fast, however you'd like to rock, just explore. Pausing whenever you want to. And then when you're ready, come back onto your back and just lie on your back with your knees bent, hip width apart. Turn the palms down, have them beside your hips. Become aware of your feet. Feel that you are inhabiting your feet. And feel yourself safely held by your support. Feel that your back is cradled by your mat. Not on every exhalation, you're just sinking down. And then just stamp your feet once or twice by lifting your feet and dropping them. Just to help with this sensation of feeling your feet solid. Take away anything that's under your head. And then we're just going to do a couple of movements in the bridge posture. So lengthen the back of the neck, tuck the chin into the chest. Breathe in and just gently lift the hips to come up onto the shoulder. Keep the back of the neck long and the knees stable. Exhale to roll down. And then we're going to do that once or twice more, depending on your energy level. So you listen in and you work with kindness. But this time we're going to lengthen the exhalation as we did before. So inhale, lift up, come up onto the shoulders, keep the knees stable. And then with a much slower out breath, slowly, slowly, slowly roll the spine down. At the end of the out breath, the tailbone comes back to the mat. So again, just try this with a longer exhalation, just to help to engage the parasympathetic nervous system. And as you move, li really listen into your body. So anytime you need to rest out, 
please do so. And to counter pose, just hug the knees into the chest. And again, thinking of rocking and how it soothes us from the stress response, helps to dial down the stress response. Just rock out from side to side. Rocking it anyway. And you can actually straighten out the legs and from lying, you can just push on the hands to rock the body. So the palms are down beside the hips. And you're just having a nice sense of rocking yourself. And then when you're ready, we're going to go into our deeper yoga nidra relaxation. So just take a moment or two now to settle into your support, be it a bed, a sofa or the floor, using cushions under your head, under your knees, blankets, eye masks, anything you need to make yourself comfortable. And just while you get ready, I'm just going to say that again, I'm amending a yoga nidra from Richard Miller, the IRS program. Um, it will be around 20 minutes and then we'll do a little more grounding for those of you that want to stay on. But just a reminder for those of you that have been here for the session so far, that are hacks that we're using to come out of the fear response. Remembering that safety is the main antidote to, to the fear response. So we want to work with a longer out breath to engage the parasympathetic nervous system. We want to think about co-regulation. So finding a safe, trusted person or pet that we can be near to because that gives us a sense of safety. We want to think of our safe resource, which is something we can think about or touch, which makes us feel safe and connected. And finally, we want to feel embodied and grounded. And most important, we want to feel that we are in the present moment, because to quote Eckhart Tolle again, in this moment, there is nothing to fear. There's only fear if we come out of this moment, and that's generally to do with imagination, what we think might happen, but very often won't happen. So with that in mind, I'm going to turn my camera off for 20 minutes. And just to say that when we do our yoga nidra practice, try not to move if at all possible, try to keep as still as you can, but obviously if you need to move, that's okay. And the other point is, do try, if you can, to think of a Sankalpa. So this is a positive focus, something that's in set in the present moment, but something, an example might be, my body is healing, or I am full of vitality, or I am peaceful and calm. So think of an intention that you can set. So just adjust your body so you feel completely supported by the surface you're resting on. And now release tension if you have any in your jaw, the shoulders, arms, legs, your whole body and mind settling into feeling at rest and at ease. Welcome every experience you have. Allow your senses to be open to your environment and the sounds around you. Welcome the feeling of air touching your skin the sensation where your body touches the surface that's supporting it. And the feeling of letting go and being at ease throughout your entire body and mind.
Welcome, a feeling of life living you with purpose, meaning and value. At any time you feel too deep or uncomfortable, just open your eyes and rub your thumb and index finger together. Bring to mind now your intention, your sankalpa, and state this three times with meaning silently to yourself now. Bring attention to your safe resource. This might be a place within your body or externally where you experience a felt sense of safety and well-being. So this might be a place, a person, or a physical experience that supports you to feel secure and at ease. Remember, you can return to your safe resource at any time, day or night, or during this practice. We're going to rotate the attention throughout the body now while experiencing and welcoming all sensations. Sense your jaw, mouth, lips, tongue, the entire inside of your mouth, the jaw and mouth as sensation. Give up thinking and simply welcome sensation in the jaw and mouth. Sense your left ear, right ear, welcoming both ears at the same time as sensation. Sense your left nostril, right nostril, the flow of air and sensation, sensation inside both nostrils. Feel the sensation of the left eye, Eyebrow, temple, cheekbone, the entire left eye, right eye, eyebrow, temple, cheekbone, the entire right eye, Welcome both eyes at the same time as sensation. Without thinking, just feel the sensation of the forehead, scalp, back of the head, neck, the entire face, head, and neck as sensation. Sense your left shoulder, left upper arm, forearm, wrist, palm and fingers. The sensation of the entire left arm and hand Right shoulder, right upper arm, forearm, wrist, palm and fingers. The sensation of the entire right arm and hand, welcoming both arms and hands at the same time as radiant sensation. Sense the upper chest, mid chest, belly, 
the sensation of the upper back, mid-back, lower back, the entire back of the torso, entire front of the torso, the entire torso, front and back, inside and out, a shimmering sensation. Bring attention into the pelvis, left hip, left upper leg, knee, lower leg, ankle and foot. The sensation of the entire left foot, leg and hip. Be awake, attentive, yet relaxed and at ease, sensing the right hip, right upper leg, knee, lower leg, ankle and foot. The sensation of the entire foot, leg and hip. Welcome both hips, legs and feet all together as radiant sensation. Welcome the entire front of the body, a field of sensation, back of the body, left side of the body, right side, inside the body, outside the body, the entire body as shimmering sensation. Just watch all of these sensations coming and going, everything just as it is. Feel yourself as non-judging awareness in which all of these sensations are coming and going. Just affirm to yourself, I'm practicing yoga nidra. My body is deeply at rest, perhaps even asleep, but I am aware at ease, attentive. Sense the body breathing itself and the natural flow of sensation as the breath enters and leaves the nostrils, the gentle rise and fall of the abdomen. Just feel the movement of the abdomen. Now begin counting from one to 11, or sensing your belly rising and falling with each breath like this. One, belly rising. One, belly releasing. Two, belly rising. Two, belly releasing, and so on. With each count, tension releasing throughout your entire body. Continue counting on your own. During each release of the belly, feel a deeper release of tension throughout your body. Six. 
sensing and releasing tension, welcoming deep relaxation throughout your body. When you come to 11, or if you happen to lose count, begin again at one. Long, smooth exhalation, tension releasing throughout the entire body, jaw, ears, eyes, forehead, scalp, shoulders, belly, legs. Tension releasing throughout the whole body. Now, allow the counting to fall away. Remain attentive to the flow of sensation throughout the body, sensing the body as a field of shimmering sensation. Welcome feelings that are present, perhaps feeling of warmth, heaviness, or a feeling of being at ease without changing anything, simply welcoming feelings that are present just as they are. Bring attention to sensations of well-being or joy in your body. We may recall a memory or particular person, animal, place or circumstance that invites joy or well-being into your body. Experience the feeling of well-being or joy expanding throughout your entire body. Every cell in your body welcoming its natural sense of joy and well being. Perhaps experience an inner smile coming from your heart throughout your entire body. Joy, well being, and an inner smile flowing throughout your body, torso, arms, and legs your entire body alive with the feeling of well-being and joy. Rest here being awareness. Feeling your wholeness with all of life, at ease, everything just as it is. Sensing your wholeness connected to yourself and the world around you and all of life. Take a few moments now and welcome a feeling of gratitude for taking this time to experience your wholeness and healing and for taking time for practicing deep relaxation. The invitation now is to remain resting if you would wish. Otherwise, just begin to open your senses and become aware of any sounds 
you can hear outside your space and just tune into that sound with full awareness. And notice any sounds you can hear inside your space and tune into that sound with full awareness. Become aware of the sensation of touch, your clothing on your skin, the texture of what you are lying on, what's on your feet or your covering. any smells or tastes you have, you're aware of. And then if you don't wish to remain resting, just begin to move your fingers and your toes. And just make any small movements that feel right and comfortable for you. And if you wish to come up to sitting, just roll to one side first and stay there for a moment or two. Just allow yourself to come back, to wake up. And then taking as much time as you need, when you're ready, come up to a comfortable sitting position. So again, we want to come into the body because that's a deep relaxation. So just take a moment or two to feel yourself into your body. And it can be helpful to clap your hands or stamp your feet. You can rub your hands together, palm your eyes to so have a nice uh, space in the palms and just the eye socket fits in there nicely. So just open and close your eyes into the palms. And just feel the warmth of the palms soothing your eyes. And then when you're ready, just gently move the hands away. And then take a moment or two to look around your space. And we're going to do a few more grounding practices now. And I should just say, because that's quite a deep relaxation, although I'm going to do some grounding work with you, even after the session's finished, just come back very slowly into your day. So don't rush into anything too frenetic. Just take your time after the class is finished. But for now, take your fingertips, just massage around the skull. Give your, your um, scalp a nice massage. It's also helpful just to take the fingertips and tap them all around the scalp. Just to stimulate blood flow to the head, to wake up the brain in the nicest possible way. And then we can stroke down the face. And then cross the arms on the heart and just tap on the collarbone a few times. And at the beginning of the session, we were talking about coming out of the fear response and I was passing on all kinds of tools. And this is actually quite a good one as well. because This helps to calm down the nervous system, calm down all that activation. Hopefully you don't have any activation to calm down now. And then just stroke down the arms a few times. That's also a nice one. So with the opposite palm, just stroke quite firmly down the arms. 
and then rub the palms together. And then we're going to tap on the chest. And if we were in a class in real life, we could go, ah, and as we're on Zoom, you can still make that sound if you like, like Tarzan. And then drop your hands to your knees and just close your eyes and experience the sensation of your palms on your knees and the texture of whatever you're wearing on your legs. Just feel that and observe whether the palms feel cool or warm in the temperature of the legs. And then again, as we did at the beginning of the practice, we're going to bring in our breathing, a particular pranayama or breathing technique to help keep us even more calm. So let's just remind ourselves, one hand on the chest, one hand on the belly. We're going to start by focusing on a long, smooth out breath. And if you've been here for the whole session, just observe if the quality of the breath has changed since the beginning. Remember, if we can, we're directing the breath into the hand on the belly. We're thinking of the breath as being slow and low. And then just see if you can make that out breath slightly longer than the in-breath. And then bring the hands to prayer at the heart. We're going to finish with a little bit of chanting. Remembering chanting is always optional. So if you don't want to chant, you can just breathe and do the movement or you can hum, which helps nitric oxide. So you can chant, hum or just breathe. So I'll just demonstrate this. We're going to inhale, opening the arms wide. Then we're going to chant to the heart. Take an extra breath if you need it. Inhale, we'll do this together. Shanti, shanti, shanti. Once more, breathe in to our hearts. Shanti, shanti, shanti. Just close your eyes, remembering that the chant shanti means peace, but it's also associated with nourishment and the root chakra, which is all about coming out of the fear response. So just take a moment or two to observe how you're feeling now. See if you can be in your body, see if you can be in this present moment and just observe a state of peace, particularly in the natural pause that there is after the exhalation. And then when you're ready, please open your eyes. And we just take a bow to our hearts, to acknowledge our hearts and our whole body with kindness. And just like to say thank you all so much for being here. And I hope some of the tools of yoga I've given you really help you. And if you're on Facebook, please do share. And, uh, you know, it's great if we can have some feedback and help each other with what helps you to come out of the fear response. And also just to say, I'm not going to be here next week because I'm traveling. I was hoping to do a class, but I think it's going to be too much for my energy levels. So, but I have recorded this class. So I will send out the recording. So I will see you, I hope in two weeks. Uh, meanwhile, I hope all these techniques will help you. And I send you lots and lots of love and take care everybody. So thank you for being here. Lots of love. Bye everybody and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Thanks. Thank you.